Welcome to another episode of the True Crime Tales. Today's episode is called The Graveyard Mystery. It all started out on a warm summer evening. Tom and Diane were out filming a short video for their school audiovisual project, which they had to turn in for a grade in two weeks. They wanted to do a spooky video that would draw attention and hopefully get them a good grade on the project. They stumbled along this old, abandoned, rundown house in the countryside. They thought they could start to shoot the video here. It would serve as a good backdrop, Diane said. It was getting late, but with the summer nights being short and days long, that gave theme the extra time to look around the place prior to starting the video. They both agreed that they wanted to get a sunset start and film into the darkness of the night. Since it was a full moon out tonight, their timing could not have been any better. They set out to look for a good sunset location. While they were scouting out the location, they noticed an old, abandoned graveyard out back and down by the tree row. They hurried over to that location to see if it would be good for their shoot. Once they got there, they found it to be a perfect place. With the tree row in the background, it would be great since the moon would rise behind the trees, giving that eerie feeling about it. They were walking along the path next to the old metal fence. At the end of the path, the gate was half hanging on its hinges. They looked at each other and they said, should we, with a little fear in their voice, they agreed to, so into the graveyard they went. The time was starting to run out since the moon was ready to rise shortly. At that moment, Diane remembered something her dad told her once before when she was younger, that looking at a full moon through the tree limbs always brought bad luck. Tom laughed and told her it was just an old superstition and that he had heard the same thing when he was younger. They laughed and proceeded into the graveyard. They slipped past the broken gate and stopped. They looked around and found a perfect headstone to use as a backdrop. Their plot for this scene was to be that one would jump out from behind the headstone and scare the other one. Diane decided she wanted to jump out because she did not like the idea of the one being scared. They took their places and looked around little longer since the moon did not rise until a little bit later. Tom noticed that some of the dates on the headstones were very old. He pointed out that the dates were dated back to around 1864 time frame. As they were exploring while waiting for the moon to rise, they heard some rustling of the leaves in the tree row. They look at each other and without saying a word, they can see the fear in each other's eyes. They squatted down as to hide from whatever made the noise outside the fence. As they started to snicker, then they heard a very loud thud and the whole fence rattled and started to sway. It was a very startling noise and Diane screamed loudly as Tom rushed to put his hand over her mouth to keep her quiet. At that time, they heard a loud squeal and with the night being without wind and so far back in the middle of nowhere. There was not a sound anywhere but that loud squeal Tom started to laugh and Diane pushed him in dismay that he would find this funny. He laughed at her and told her calm down. It's only a big pig from the farm that ran into the fence that made that noise. Once Diane realized he was right, she started to snicker even more. It was about that time when the moon was getting to be at the perfect height in the sky to start filming. They wanted to get this done right in one shot since they did not like the idea of being in that graveyard at night, much less on a full moon. Tom sat by the headstone while Diane went behind it and was ready to jump out to scare him. With the noise fresh in his mind, Tom already had the look of fear on his face. He had the camera set up between him and the gate. It was time and Diane then jumped out from behind the headstone and at that point Tom started to jump in fright. He lost his footing and stumbled down to the ground near where he was standing. At that point he was laying face down on the ground. Diane thought, wow, perfect shot. And it was actually very good reaction, she thought. As she was looking at Tom, he started to push himself up, and as he did, he saw something that caught his eye. At that point, he started to scramble hard to get to his feet. Diane thought it was all part of the show for the camera. So little did she know this was not an act, but real fear. He yelled to her to run and get out of here. As he started to run, Diane follows close behind him. 
They both run towards the broken gate to escape, but the big pig was there blocking the exit. At this point, Tom did not care, so he just ran up to the pig and yelled, which startled the pig. The pig was more scared than they were and took off running. Diane thought to herself that just seeing the pig run was funny enough. Once they were outside the gate, they started to slow down and then were able to catch their breath. Diane asked Tom, what was it that made you scream and run so fast for? The first words out of Diane's mouth were, darn, we left the camera. Tom then said, who cares about the camera? I am not going back in there to get it. If you want the camera, then you go get it. At that point, Diane told Tom to stop and slow down and tell her what was going on. He told her as he was pushing up off the ground, he noticed he was looking right at the camera and thinking they had the perfect scene for their movie. As he focused more on the camera, he noticed a skeleton arm and hand stretching out of the ground as if to reach for the camera itself. Diane was so shocked and asked, did you not see that when you put the camera there? Tom replied, no, I did not see it then, as if it just appeared out of nowhere and was reaching for the camera. They both knew that someone had to go and get the camera since it had all the footage on it for their class project. Diane told Tom you saw it once you can see it again as for, I am not going back in there again after what you just told me. Tom gathered his breath and nerves and then told her, okay, wait, I will go and get it. Tom got past the gate and was talking the whole way towards the camera. Diane could hear him in the distance and then suddenly he went silent. Diane started to speak out to him softly and as she got no reply, she then started to yell a little louder. Tom never replied. She was frightened and did not want to go in there to get him, but she had no choice now. She started to squeeze by the gate and as she was walking towards the spot where they were before, she was whispering to Tom the whole way. He never replied. As she got close to the area where they were filming, she noticed a big hole in the ground. She looked in and it was too dark to see, so she used her phone flashlight to see down in the hole. Once she turned the light to the bottom of the hole, she could see Tom laying in the hole about 10 feet down, and there were other tunnels leading around that hole as well. The tunnels were partially covered up by dirt and debris that Tom stepped on and the ground and it gave way. She knew at that moment she could do nothing to get him out of the hole, so she turned to call for help. As she turned and with the flashlight still on the phone, there it was, the hand and arm sticking out the ground behind the camera. She then got even more scared and ran out of the graveyard again. She called for help, but since they were so far out in the countryside, it was hard to get a signal on the phone. She jumped in the car to rush to a location that she could get signal to call for help. As she was driving down the old dirt road, the pig jumped out of the field and into the road right in front of her. She thought to herself that pig is everywhere. She got to a location where she could call for help, and she was able to contact someone. They told her to stay there on the main road, and once they got there, she could show them the way to get to him. While she was waiting, that pig came along again. She thought to herself that pig is big and looks like it is getting bigger each time she saw it. Wow, how healthy it is and must be eating good, she thought. She knew it was the same pig because of its dark markings. Little did she know that the markings were branded into the pig, and the branding as the moon started to come out from behind the only cloud in the sky was easy to see then. It was a skull and crossbones marking. She got scared and thought what evil-minded person would use a mark like that to brand his stock with. Help arrived and they drove back down the dirt road to go and get Tom out of the hole. Once they got to the graveyard, she had to explain to them why they were in this location to begin with. They grinned and understood, but then they told her that all this is private property and that they had no right to be there. With that having been said, she led them to the hole where Tom was. Once they got there, Tom was nowhere to be found. They noticed that looked like someone or something pushed the dirt out of the way leading to one of the tunnels at the bottom of the hole. They were using the flashlights to look to see if anyone or anything was around there. They saw nothing. One of the smaller guys that came to help out got into the hole and was looking in the tunnel that they suspected Tom might have cleared and crawled out of since the hole was too deep to climb out. 
He went in and after a few minutes pass, he did not return. They waited longer for him to come back out of the tunnel. He never did emerge from the tunnel, so they started to call out his name. After about 10 more minutes passed, they heard something in the distance, and it was calling out their names. It was the guy who came to help. They were looking around, and from the softness of the sound, they could tell that it was some ways in the distance. It was the guy who jumped in the hole and found the tunnel, and that tunnel led to the other side of the tree row. Once they got over there, they looked around the opening of the tunnel and saw that there seems like there was a scuffle at the entrance to the tunnel. Looked like someone came out of the tunnel and had a fight or something at the end of the tunnel. They spent hours looking for Tom, and to avail they could not find anywhere he could have gotten off to. Diane went back to the graveyard. There she thought that if anything Tom would at least go back to where it all started. Of course once she got there no one was there. It was getting late, but Diane was not yet tired. She thought that she would go and look at he camera, even though it was turned over on its side from all the disturbance. She found that it had run out of time recording. She went ahead and rewind the camera to see if anything else was on there. She go to the point where Tom slipped into the hole. Since that point on, she heard and saw nothing on the playback. As she sat there watching then, she saw a dark shadow appear around the hole where Tom had fallen into. She wanted to go to the hole again, but she was still scared of being in the graveyard. It was way past midnight, and in just a few hours the sun would come up. As she sat in the car watching the video over and over again, the rescue helpers all had told her that they found nothing anywhere. They followed some of the tracks from around the tunnel, but they found out the tracks were just leading them in circles. They did see that some of the tracks belonged to a big pig. As soon as they told her that she put it all together, the shadow that she saw on the videotape belonged to a pig. It was her only conclusion. She thought that it could have been a person crouching down looking into the hole, but after thinking about the pig statement, the rescue. Person mentioned it started to make sense. The rescue persons told her that all they can do is to report this to the police and file a missing person report. After that, they left the scene and left Diane there all alone. She started to get more scared all alone, but with daybreak coming in about one hour, she hung in there. After daybreak, she went back to the hole where Tom was last seen. There she could see the ground much better than before. All around the whole area was pig markings. She thought to herself that pig sure gets around. In light of all that has happened, she thought only if I spoke pig, I can talk to it and ask that pig if it had seen or know anything. Crazy idea, she thought. She went back to where this whole nightmare started and returned to where the hand was sticking out of the ground. Once there, she saw what else, but pig footprints all around that as well. It was not long after that the police came and started to talk with her. Once they got the story from her, they were also looking around for Tom as well. The police went over to the farmhouse in the distance. While they were talking to the farmer, he told them that he had not seen or heard anything all night. He did tell them that he was a hog farmer and went out to show them the pig's pens where he kept them. They found nothing and left the farm, Diane told the police. It is not like him to just leave and not say anything. He had never done anything like that in the past. They could not do anything more, so they told her to drop by the station later to fill out paperwork, and that they would continue to look for him. There was nothing left for her to do as well. But she did not just want to leave without Tom. She looked around more. She went back to the hole, and this time it seemed less scary since it was sunlight out. She saw better the hole and tunnels. First thing she thought was, why are there tunnels under a graveyard? Only then, all she could think of was that they were used to rob the graves that were there. She knew from history that in the old days, others would be buried with their most valuable possessions, so she thought maybe someone was looting the old graves. But why the hand sticking out of the ground? Was that just to scare off the others that might want to loot them as well? That pig she always saw, how is that tied into all this? Was that pig just a keeper of the graveyard? So many questions and yet no answers. She thought that since pigs are omnivores, that maybe that big pig was the culprit to why they cannot find Tom. 
She had to find the answer, so she set out to find the pig with the skull and crossbones marking. She looked around everywhere but could not find it. Maybe she thought that the pig only comes out at nights. She shook off that thought and then proceeded to head over to Pig Farm, the most logical choice, she thought. After she was there, the farmer came out to tell he that this was private property and that she had no reason to be there. She explained she was there looking for her friend. The farmer asked, are you part of what the police were asking and talking about last night? Yes, she told them. Do you know anything? Have you heard anything? The farm told he no, and as far as hearing anything, he told her sorry, but his pigs do not talk, so he was unable to hear anything. He told her that she was welcome to look around, but be careful cause he would not be responsible to anything that the pigs might do to her. She was looking at the pig pens and noticed that none had any markings on them at all. She asked the farmer if any of his pigs have gotten out or does he let them roam the fields alone. He told her that only a very few older ones will get the chance to roam the fields around since there was no fence he was scared to allow the younger ones to roam because he told her they might never return. As the farmer turned to walk away, she had one more question for him. She asked, do you know of any pigs or farmers around that use the skull and crossbones as a marking for their stock? The farmer stopped dead in his tracks and asked, why would you ask that question? She told him that she had seen one like that last night. The farmer was unsettled and told her yes. Long ago, he had one that was such a mean one and he marked it as such. He told her that the pig would always create trouble and harass the other pigs. She asked him, where is that pig now? He told her that few years back he got rid of it and has never seen it again. She told him that she saw it last night around the graveyard. The farmer looked shocked and just turned away and left. She then wondered how he had gotten rid of it. All this was getting her no closer to finding her friend. She was getting desperate to find him or any signs that might lead to his whereabouts. She had only one last place to look, and that was in the old abandoned house that sat near the tree row where the graveyard was. She went over to it and started to enter. It was old and musty smelling. It had dust everywhere as if no one or anything ever went inside for years. She entered and saw that from the inside the owners of the house used to be very rich. Walls were adorned with great woodwork. Everything about it pointed to high class. She roamed around a while and Finial came to a stairway that led down to a basement. She got the flashlight out of the car prior to entering the house and pointed the light down to the basement. There she saw nothing but darkness outside of the flashlight path. She started down the stairs and she could hear noises as she got closer to the bottom. She was scared but pushed on cause she needed to find her friend. As she got to the bottom, she was shocked at what she saw. There were tunnels leading into the basement through the walls. She thought, where do those lead or do any of those lead to the graveyard? Since on one looked in the second tunnel from the hole that Tom feel into maybe it ended up here. She crouched down and shined the light down the tunnel. It was impossible to see anything down the shaft. She then started to look around the basement. There she found a lot of pig tracks all over the place. She looked around and was thinking, which tunnel do I dare go down first to look? She then saw a tunnel that looked like it was used the most and had footprints from the pig and other marks that looked like something dragged. These marks looked a lot like the marks where the other tunnel came out near the farmer's yard. She gathered her nerves and proceeded down the tunnel. Once inside the tunnel, she saw that it had a few other tunnels branching off from it. She stayed in the tunnel where the drag marks lead her. Finally, she came to the tunnel end, and once there, she saw it was the same hole where Tom initially fell into. She then backtracked to go back into the basement. While she was crawling around in this tunnel, she was amazed by just how big the tunnel was. She could almost stand up in there. She took the branch of the tunnel that had faint drag marks in it. She went in. As she got in, the tunnel narrowed and got smaller some. She has to now crawl in this one. As she got to a spot in the tunnel that got larger and seemed like another room, she could stand up in there. This room had a dozen other tunnels off from it. She thought there was no way she could search them all. She saw some bones from small animals. 
So she thought in some of the tunnels. So she did not want to go down those. As she entered the maze of tunnels, she came across a big skeleton of what appeared to be a bigger animal. She pushed her way further inside, not knowing what she might encounter. As she was making her way in the tunnel, she saw what appeared to be blood. She started to freak out, but if it once led from the graveyard, it could be Tom, she thought, and that gave her the power and courage to push on. She came across a big curve in the tunnel, and in that section there were what appeared to be a lot of niches in the walls. Most were filled with dirt, and some with bones. She got towards the end of the tunnel, she saw something shining from her light beam reflecting on it. She then started to hurry towards it, not knowing what it actually was. Once she got to it, it was Tom. She had found him. She was so happy to see him, but she did not even know if he was alive or not, much less how he got in there. She only guessed he walked in there and got lost and trapped. She checked to see if he was alive, and yes, to her amazement, he was still alive. He had lost some blood from what she could see and was passed out from that. She did not care. All she wanted to do is get him out of there. She started to drag him out, and after a while of dragging him, she finally made it to the big center room in the tunnels. From there, she knew where she had to go to get to the main house basement. She got the strength to get him to the basement, and yet she knew she could never get him up the stairs. She then left him there and ran outside to call for help to get him out of there and to the hospital. Once the police and ambulance came to get him and take him to the hospital, she was finally able to break down and cry and be scared. They all met up at the hospital and found out Tom had a broken leg and suffered from a nasty cut on his arm from the fall. They took care of him and he was able to return back to normal life. Time came that they needed to turn in their project, but all they could turn in was the part of Tom getting scared from Diane jumping out from behind the stone and then Tom falling down the hole. They explained to the teacher that they had no other chance to pick up where they left off. They told the teacher the story of what happened and with all that the teacher did have sympathy and ended up giving them a good passing grade even though their video was short. After all that Tom and Diane talked about the situation and came to the conclusion that the pig was the one who finally dragged Tom throughout the tunnels. Why did the pig do that? They could only hope it was to help him and not to savor him later like a wounded animal at a later time. They dismissed the whole ordeal and was just so happy to be alive and walking around again. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Please tune in next week for another exciting episode. Until then, see you soon. Remember, please subscribe.